Imagine a train that never stops, a 1001 car monster plowing through a frozen earth, carrying the last humans alive. This is Snowpiercer. But is such a train even possible to exist in real life? From material costs to the actual physics behind it? Let's break it all down as we dive deep trying to answer to the question. Let's start with the basics. Snowpiercer is over 16 kilometers long, about 10 miles, and made up of 1,001 cars. In real life, the longest train ever was an Australian or train in 2001. It stretched 7.4 kilometers, with 682 cars, and needed eight locomotives to move. That's less than half the length of Snowpiercer. Now, imagine scaling that up. If each car weighed 50 tons, a conservative estimate, Snowpiercer would weigh over 50,000 tons. That's more than 80 fully loaded Airbus A380 South, moving on steel rails in ice and snow. In the show, Snowpiercer runs on the mysterious Eternal Engine, a fictional device that never runs out of energy. In real life, that doesn't exist. To power a train like this non-stop, nuclear energy is the only logical solution. Think of a submarine reactor, compact, efficient, powerful, a nuclear-powered train is possible in theory, but without regular stops and safety protocols, it would be a rolling radiation risk. Also, here's the catch. You'd need shielding, cooling systems, safe storage for nuclear waste, regular inspections, none of which are ever shown in the series. Snowpiercer loops the entire planet in 133 days, averaging 100 kilometers per hour. That's slower than a bullet train, but impressive for a train pulling 1,000 cars. But here's where realism breaks down. This train runs through a frozen world. No maintenance crews, no working infrastructure, no communications. In cold climates, rails warp and crack. Switches, freeze, even snow plows have trouble clearing tracks. And this train doesn't just face snow, it faces glaciers. Also, a 10 mile long train couldn't take sharp turns. It couldn't climb steep grades. Modern railroads would need a complete overhaul, or a new, reinforced global track, just to make this train roll at all. But what about materials and the cost of it? Well, just think how much stainless steel you have to gather for 1001 rail cars. Stainless steel is highly resistant to rust and corrosion because of the chromium, which forms a protective layer on the surface, is usually more durable over time especially in harsh environments, and usually has a shiny, polished appearance and stays clean looking. Stainless steel is generally more expensive too because of the added elements in production process. On top of this, add components for engines, suspension, insulation, life support, all of them adds up. On average, a modern train car costs between two to five million dollars. So building the bare minimum would cost between five and 10 billion dollars. Now add a custom nuclear reactor, heat systems, greenhouse cars, aquaponics, radiation shielding, and complex waste systems, specialized wheels, brakes, and snow-hardened materials. And suddenly you're looking at a bill of over $15 billion just to get it rolling. Snowpiercer isn't just a train, it's a moving city. We have the front side where is the first class, most likely a five-star hotel with saunas, sushi, and many other facilities. Then we got second class where we can find the crew, like doctors, engineers, teachers, and so on. Third class filled up with workers, cleaners, and medium class people. And finally, we have the tail, which is overcrowded, chaotic, and brutal. While the class divide is a metaphor, the logistics are serious. Can a single train support agriculture, livestock, clean water, waste recycling, and human life? Greenhouses, aquaponics, and water recycling do exist. NASA uses them on space stations. Submarines use them for months underwater. But scaling that to feed thousands on a constantly moving train in a frozen world? There's no room for error. No resupplies, no repairs. That's why real world planners agree. If the Earth were freezing over, we wouldn't build trains. We'd build bunkers. Let's compare survival strategies. Basic underground bunkers can cost $50,000 to $200,000. Luxury bunkers? Around $1 million, and they're already being built today. $15 billion. The estimated cost of Snowpiercer? 
could build secure shelters for tens of thousands. Bunkers don't require 16 kilometers of track, nuclear power, or constant motion. They're scalable, repairable, and safe from the outside world. So could Snowpiercer exist in real life? Some parts? Yes, we have the technology to build long trains, but the size is debatable. Only the locomotive measures 82.9 meters in length, 12.9 meters in height, and 9.4 meters width. It's like three to four times bigger than an actual ES-44. We could power one with nuclear energy. We even have systems to grow food in isolation. But one thing stops this from becoming reality. Cost, complexity, and common sense. When the world ends, we're not building a train. We're going underground. Snowpiercer is a brilliant sci-fi piece, a moving metaphor for survival, inequality, and control. But as an engineering project, it's frozen fiction. Nothing more, nothing less. If you haven't seen the movie or the Netflix series, I really recommend it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe for more, and let us know what train should we investigate next, real or fictional. All of them are part of the railway fantasy. See you in the next one.